and say, okay, we have a new restaurant or we have a new home. You need a critical mass. And this bridge all of a sudden was a symbol that this could happen. And what was so interesting to me is is when there were, you know, Stuart Fitz and, and a couple partners go, hey, this is in, and this is at a soccer game. And one of the soccer dads said, hey, you know, there's a bridge going up and the, the property's not that expensive on the other side. Maybe you ought to buy a little bit. So they were just buying it because there was a bridge. No vision at all. But very quickly they go, this could be really cool. And instead of as developers... They were doing it as families saying, we could maybe do a, a really a legacy project for our family. Never sell it, you know, have 100-year leases or 20-year leases, but really develop something that is, is iconic for Dallas and our contribution and our family's contribution to Dallas. So that was their original thought, but it happened because of the bridge. You, you use the word innovators in your article quite a bit, and and I think that's exactly what the folks that have you know created this really fun environment down in Trinity Groves are, and and maybe that is uh, the the wave of the future, and that is the way for Dallas to move forward as an international city. I think. Well, I, I think that Dallas. Um is a city of innovators, and there are also you know developers. But when you have a project like this, that's done not by developers that have all the mindset of developers and the bank pressures and the lending pressures, and here we need to get some apartments up, and we need to get some retail. But they're looking for the long haul to think they worked on this for twelve years, and well, the city says, well, once you have a use, then ask for the zoning. Say, so, oh no, 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 we want to have a plan for our vision and our vision is we're going to assemble 80 acres and we want to have unlimited height so we can be downtown Dallas it's just downtown Dallas will be on the southern side of the river and and we like the idea of having stepped down and best practice and mixed use in fact we're going to start with mixed use we'll start with some really cool incubator restaurants with different food types so we can attract a diverse group of people. Rather than mandating diversity, let's attract diversity. And that's what they've done. This is Deconstructing Dallas. We've got Doug Newby on with us talking about neighborhoods in Dallas. We, we just kind of started touching on West Dallas. We started touching on Trinity Groves. And as I mentioned, I live in North Oak Cliff, and so I can ride my bike. I'm about maybe a mile maybe a mile and a half max from Trinity Grove. And so, you know, I'm able to ride my bike there. And even once I started doing so, it's amazing if you ride across the Continental Bridge, uh, the Ron Kirk Bridge, how close you are to the design district, how close you are to downtown. And so part of your article on your blog was you list all these places that are a mile, two miles, three miles, even SMUs about four or five miles down the road, you know, do we really even know how close we are as a city? I often talk about how close we are from downtown to Baylor or downtown to Methodist. But in your article, I think you do a really good job talking about how close Trinity Groves is to places that are, seem so disconnected. Well, this is one of the things that surprised me the most, because I still think, well, Trinity Groves is a real cool place, but that's a long way away. Well, it's not a long way away. I mean, kind of everything, and I, and I mentioned that from my early years as a real estate agent selling homes without owning a car, a neighborhood is where you can ride your bike or you can walk to. And so I started looking at the specific mileage that you can walk or ride your bike and find out, wait a minute, you can get from Trinity Groves to White Rock Lake in one direction down the Santa Fe Trail or the other direction down the Katy Trail and you're only 6.9 miles from either direction? Well, that's not even as long as it is around the lake. And then you can get to SMU, like you say, in four or five miles or, or you know, one of the comments on the post was from the SMU Varsity Women's Swim Coach that the, the new aquatic center is right on the, the trail. He mm -hmm. jumps on the trail and he spends a day doing all these cool things. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, within four miles, four and a half miles, and you know the museums and the athletic centers and the and the the nature trails and all that is really just within walking or biking distance. And people don't realize that because these trails are so new, 
and their connections to each other are so new. And then you have the neighborhoods where you have expensive neighborhoods, but you also have neighborhoods where you have really cool houses for just, you know, two or three hundred thousand dollars. They're right off the trail and architect designed homes and, you know, at all different price points. So it's really a neat neighborhood. This is Deconstructing Dallas, Ryan Trimble, Sean Williams. We're going to take a break and be right back with Doug Newby. Stay with us. Thanks for tuning in.